Okay. Uh, welcome everyone to the program analysis session. Uh, we will have three talks. First of which is from Yotam, uh, from Tel Aviv University. It's about property directed reachability as abstract interpretation in the monotone theory. Uh, Yotam, go ahead. Okay. Thanks for the introduction. This is joint work with Muli Sagiv, Sharon Schwann, and James Wilcox, and it's about invariant inference, a set of techniques for proving the safety of transition systems. Suppose we have, for example, a system over n plus one propositional variables representing a number in binary, which starts from zero, and in each step incremented by two. And this defines the reachable state of the system, and we want to prove that no reachable state is bad, and here bad means being this number, 10001, which is uh, 2 to the n plus 1. So we want to prove that we can get to this number by iteratively adding 2, starting from 0. And to do that, we want to find an inductive invariant, a set of states that contains the initial states, excludes the bad states, and is closed under transitions of the system. So if you start from a state inside the invariant and make a transition, you also end up in a state inside the invariant. For example, the property that the number is never the bad number, of course, holds, but it's not an inductive invariant because there is a transition from a state that's not the bad number to the state that is the bad number. But we can strengthen this property to say that the number is always even, which uh, implies the safety property because the bad number is not even. And this is an inductive invariant. If you start from an even number and add two, you also end up with an even number. Such an inductive invariant contains all the reachable states of the system, separating them, them from the bad states, establishing the safety of the system. In invariant inference, the goal is to automatically find such inductive invariants, resulting in fully automatic safety verification. One of the latest breakthroughs in invariant inference is an algorithm called IC3PDR, which was published in 2011 and was recognized quickly afterwards as a very, very big thing. So for example, the HVC award from the subsequent year cites reports of leading performance on hardware verification problems. And the fact that IC3 has innovated this mature research area in what by now includes not only the verification of hardware, but also adaptations of the algorithm to software verification. So this is wonderful. The question is, why is it so wonderful? Surely, science holds the answer. Unfortunately, science doesn't tell us much about IC3PDR. So this is what we have to say about IC3PDR, that it can be roughly understood as an abstract interpretation procedure in a new abstract domain that can be expressed using notions from the monotone theory, work by Beshuti, originally developed in the context of exact concept learning. We were surprised by this because if you look at PDR, it mostly doesn't look like abstract interpretation. And it's significant because it partially answers a very important question about PDR, which is how it is able to over approximate rather than stick to the set of states that are exactly reachable, a key concern for every invariant inference algorithm. To understand this question and our answer, let's talk about the usual explanation of PDR and its central data structure, the frames. So the frames are a sequence of formulas or equivalently sets of states that start from the set of initial states and go monotonically. Each frame contains the pre previous one. Moreover, each frame contains the post image of the previous one, all the states reachable in one step from the previous frame, but the frames don't include any of the dead states. When this sequence converges, when two frames are equivalent, then these properties ensure that this is an inductive invariant and we are done. The usual explanation continues that these properties ensure a very important property of the frames that each frame i always contains all the states that are reachable in the system in i steps. So the first frame contains all the states reachable in one step, the second frame contains all the states reachable in two steps, and so on. So this is the usual explanation of PDR and PDR's frames, but there's something missing here because it's not enough to say that PDR contains all the states which have been in I steps. The, the frames need to contain many states beyond that. Otherwise, this is not PDR. This is, this is exact forward reachability. And we know that the exact forward reachability may take many iterations before it converges to an invariant. For example, in the example we had before, 
the state visible in i steps are the even numbers less than or equal to 2i. And this takes only after an exponentially many iterations, this arrives at the inductive invariant of all the even numbers. So instead, in order to converge in few frames, PDR must over approximate. And in each frame contain many states beyond those that are exactly reachable. How this over approximation is performed and what can be guaranteed about it, we want to understand it theoretically. To do so, we introduce Lambda PDR, a theoretical algorithm that's a simplification of standard PDR, and we study over approximation in the Lambda PDR. The reason is that PDR over approximates at least as much as Lambda PDR, so whatever over approximation we can show is present in Lambda PDR, it's also present in standard PDR. We show that Lambda PDR is equivalent to an abstract interpretation procedure in a domain where the abstraction function is the monotone hull operator from the monotone theory. We show that this can lead to significant over approximation and, and at times to an exponential gap between the number of frames required for Lambda PDR to find an invariant and the number of iterations required for exact forward reachability to do the same. We also have a similar gap between Lambda PDR and the variant of interpolation based invariant inference, demonstrating that this kind of abstraction and this kind of over approximation are really something unique to PDR. And we also provide general bounds on the number of frames required for Lambda PDR to converge pertaining to syntactic properties of the transition system it's analyzing, bringing together results from abstract interpretation, the monotone theory, and completeness thresholds for bounded model checking. So let's start by describing Lambda PDR. And to do that, let's dive more deeply into how PDR constructs its frames. So conceptually, PDR looks at BK, the set of states that can reach a bad state in at most k steps, and checks whether there is a counterexample and a state in BK that's included in one of the frames. Such a state cannot belong to any inductive invariant, so we want to find some lemma C, so that when we conjoin it to the frame, it excludes the counterexample from the frame. We still need to satisfy the frame properties, so this lemma needs to hold for the post image of the previous frame. Furthermore, this lemma is not just an arbitrary formula, it's always a clause, a disjunction of variables and negation of variables. For example, it could be this clause. Okay, so overall, each frame of PDR consists of some clauses that contain the post image of the previous frame and exclude some counterexample from BK. The idea of lambda PDR is to take a very specific conjunction, which is just all of them all the clauses that satisfy these properties. So this gives us uh, an algorithm where we can compute uh, the frames iteratively one by one, starting from the initial states and taking the next frame to be the conjunction of all the clauses that contain the post image of the previous frame of Lambda PDR and exclude some counterexample from BK and here K is a parameter. This algorithm yields a different set of frames but they can be related to the frames of standard Lambda PDR, of standard PDR, sorry, because the frames of Lambda PDR contain all the clauses that will be present in standard PDR's frames, maybe more clauses than that. So as sets of states, the, each frame of PDR, standard PDR, contains the corresponding frame of Lambda PDR. This means that if we can show that Lambda PDR performs significant over approximation, the same holds also for standard PDR and each frame of PDR contains many states beyond those that are exactly reachable. So this is what we want to do now to show that Lambda PDR can perform significant over approximation. So if we look at the same example we had before and we run Lambda PDR with K equals zero. So in uh, BK is simply the set of bad states. Uh, so we can calculate and we do this in the paper that the first frame of Lambda PDR is the set of all even numbers with most significant bit zero. And the second frame of Lambda PDR actually converges to the inductive invariant that's all the even numbers. This is in stark contrast to what happens with exact forward reachability, where the states reachable in I steps are the even numbers less than or equal to 2i, which takes an exponential number of iterations before it arrives at the same inductive invariant. So there's a huge gap between the actually constant number of frames required for Lambda PDR 
and the exponential number of iterations required for exact forward reachability, demonstrating significant over approximation in Lambda PDR. We also have a similar gap between Lambda PDR and the variant of model-based dual interpolation based invariant inference, and the details are in the paper. So we know that Lambda PDR can perform significant over approximation, and now we want to understand this over approximation as a form of abstract interpretation in a new domain called the monotone span. And this is a, a logical abstract domain. It's a domain of, of logical formulas where a formula belongs to the monotone span of BK if it can be represented as a conjunction of clauses where each clause excludes some counterexample from BK. So if we take, for example, BK to be the singleton set of the bad state from before, then this formula belongs to the monotone span because each clause independently excludes the counterexample from BK. But if we look, for example, at this formula, which uh, captures the set of 0 and 2, this formula doesn't belong to the monotone span. And the reason is that these clauses independently, or separately from the others, don't exclude any counterexample from BK. So this defines the, our abstract domain. And now we want to set up a Galois connection between the abstract domain and the concrete domain of sets of states. So given a formula, in an element of the abstract domain, the, its concretization is the set of states that satisfy the formula. Given a set of states, the abstraction is the most precise formula that is satisfied by all the states in the set we started from. So for example, if that set is the set 0 and 2, then the formula on the right is the abstraction um, in the monotone span domain. Now we want to use the abstract domain to over approximate steps of the, of the transition system using the best abstract transform. So we start from uh, some abstract element, a formula in the domain. We take its concretization. We take the post image of the concretization, take all of this together, and uh, take compute the abstraction. This gives us a new abstract element, a new formula in the domain. And this is actually the classical construction of a best abstract transformer in really any abstract domain. So for example, if what we get in the post image, in the exact post image on the left is the, the set 0 and 2, what, what we get as the result of the best abstract transformer is the formula on the right. And this is interesting because it introduces over approximation. The concretization of the result of the best abstract trans transformer contains many states beyond the exact post image. Here, these are all the numbers, all the even numbers with more significant bit zero, not just zero and two. So our key theorem is that uh, the relation between successive frames in Lambda PDR actually corresponds to the best abstract transformer. So the next frame of Lambda PDR is always obtained from the previous frame of Lambda PDR by applying to it the best abstract transformer in the monotone span domain. So for example, uh, what the, in the example we had before, what we have on the left is actually the exact post image of the set of initial states in the example. And what we have on the right is the first frame of Lambda PDR when it executes on this example. OK. so. Uh, uh, we understand the relation between successive frames of Lambda PDR as the best abstract transformer. And taken over all the frames, over all iterations, this shows that the frames of Lambda PDR correspond to clean iterations in the monotone span abstract domain. They, so they converge to the least fixed point to the best inductive invariant in the monotone span domain. OK, so we know now that Lambda PDR is actually a form of abstract interpretation in this abstract domain. But to gain a better understanding of the kind of abstraction that's actually performed in this domain, we want a more effective definition of the abstraction function. And that actually turns out to be an existing operator defined uh, in, the, in the monotone theory, originally in exact concept learning. And I want to give you a geometric flavor of, of what this operator uh, does. So in Lambda PDR, the next frame is always computed by taking the exact post image of the previous frame and then computing the monotone hull of the result. So this is a sort of completion operator that adds to the next frame of Lambda PDR all the states that the exact post image stands between them and BK in some sense. 
So uh, the precise sense appears in the paper, and uh, uh, it is that uh, a state sigma is included in the monotone hull if between sigma and every counterexample in dk, there's a shortest path in the Hamming cube that crosses the exact post image. The precise details appear in the paper. Uh, the paper also includes the connection between this geometric interpretation and the original definition that involves conjunction of a least monotone over approximations. Uh, so all of this in the paper, which is self-contained with this regard. Okay, so uh, the understanding that wh what's happening between frames of lambda PDR corresponds to the monotone hull in the monotone theory gives us very powerful tools both to analyze uh, lambda PDR uh, on specific examples and for the next set of results that I would like to show you, which are concerned convergence bounds on the number of frames. So we know that lambda PDR is a form of abstract interpretation in this domain. And now the question we want to understand is how many iterations will be required before it, this uh, uh, abstract interpretation converges to an inductive invariant. The typical answer to such questions involves properties of the abstract domain. But unfortunately, in this case, the abstract domain always has an exponential lattice height. And there are cases where this algorithm converges uh, slowly. So uh, in order to understand when this algorithm converges in few iterations, say a polynomial number, we need to consider properties not just of the abstract domain, but also of the specific transition system it's analyzing. So to do that, what we do is provide bounds on the number of frames on, uh, uh, that Lambda PDR uses derived from properties of the specific transition system from the set of initial states and from the transition relation. And for, when the case, for the case when BK can be expressed as a single cube, as a conjunction of variables and negations of variables, then we show this upper bound, which involves the DNF size of the monotone hull of the transition relation formula. So this quantity is best understood through an example. But if we look at the example we had before and write the transition relation formula relating pre-states of the transition to post-states using two copies of the vocabulary, so this formula says that we can go from x equals zero to x equals two, the prime the variables indicate the post state. And from two, we can go to four, and from four, we can go to six, and so on. So far, this is an exquisite demonstration that I can count, but it's actually interesting because written in this junctive normal form, this is actually the, the smallest representation of this transition relation formula, and it involves an exponential number of terms. But uh, to apply the theorem, we want to take the monotone hull of the transition relation formula. And here the subscript is uh, a set of states, uh, or transitions really, over two copies of the vocabulary. So in the post state, we take uh, the monotone hull with respect to BK, which is assumed to be a single cube. In the pre-state, pre we take the monotone hull with respect to the bitwise negation of the same cube. And the monotone theory tells us that to compute the monotone hull of the transition relation formula, what we need to do is to look at the, the DNF representation uh, and drop all the literals where the formula agrees with the subscript of the monotone hull. So we drop all these literals, and this gives us the monotone hull of the transition relation formula. And actually, it turns out that this, the term arising here, subsumes all the other terms. So this formula can be expressed in a very short DNF formula, which has a constant number, actually just one term. So the theorem says that in this case, lambda PDL converges in uh, actually just two frames. Uh, and this is tight in this example, but absolutely not always. Uh, we also have an extension of this theorem for the case that BK consists of multiple cubes. Uh, and in this case, the bound uh, involves a product of the monotone, several monotone hulls and the details are in the paper. The proof I think is interesting because it shows that this monotone hull of the transition relation formula generates a new transition system, which is an, an abstract transition system, so-called, with, with the property that exact forward reachability on the, this new transition system corresponds exactly to lambda PDR. So if we can uh, bound, so to bound the number of iterations of lambda PDR, all we need to do is bound exact forward reachability on this uh, new transition system. And this we do by the relatively simple bound 
of the DNF size of the transition relation formula. For the case that BK consists of multiple cubes, we need to consider not an, just an ordinary abstract transition system, but actually a hyper transition system, and the details are in the paper. So overall, we talked about Lambda PDR, a theoretical algorithm that we use to study over approximation in standard PDR. We showed that, that Lambda PDR is equivalent to an abstract interpretation procedure in a domain based on the monotone theory. We showed that this uh, abstract interpretation can lead to significant over approximation and exponential gaps from algorithms that use exact forward reachability. And we provided the general bounds on the number of frames required for Lambda PDR pertaining to syntactic properties of the transition system it's analyzing. Thanks. Thanks for this interesting talk. Are there any questions from the audience? No? Uh, we have questions from uh, Airmeet Long Pam. He asked, is Lambda PDR strictly better than the standard PDR, or is there a trade-off between them? Uh, can, can you still hear me? Okay, great. Okay, um, so Lambda PDR is designed as more of a theoretical algorithm. Uh, so it, it's not that uh, it's amenable to efficient implementation, but if we look at uh, the number of, of frames, then um, uh, the number of, of PDR performs more of our approximation, and we have examples in the paper well, this is actually beneficial and standard PDR converges in fewer frames or in simpler frames. Uh, I believe that the other direction is also possible that uh, Lambda PDR may converge in fewer iterations than, than standard PDR, although we don't have an example of that because uh, Lambda PDR is a theoretical algorithm. But uh, yeah, so this is, it was the end of the talk, but not the end of the research. Okay. Uh, the next question is from Hari Govind. Uh, how does Lambda PDR compare to exact backward reachability? Do you do this analysis? If not, can you use the same techniques to carry out this comparison? Yeah, so um, in, in this work, we really studied the com uh, how PDR performs over approximation and uh, can be separated from exact forward reachability. The, the dual question of uh, how PDR can avoid enumerating the backward reachable states is, I think, an excellent question. Um, and we don't have an answer to it because um, uh, the forward and backward reachability are not symmetric in, in PDR, and so this needs requires new ideas. OK, we have also questions from the audience. Yeah, just an observation. I wonder. If uh, your domain of monotone functions uh, reminds something that was used years and years ago, I think centuries ago, was almost in logic programming, when we were analyzing with definite functions, uh, which were monotone functional Boolean structures. And is it true that somehow you generalize that domain to shapes that are not necessarily Boolean? Or is that just my hallucination because of COVID. I'm not uh, positive, by the way. Uh, that, that's good to hear. Um, uh, anyway, th this sounds like a very good hallucination. Um, so if you can add me to your hallucination, that would be great. The monotone theory, as, as it was uh, studied, and as, as far as I know, was not extended to logics beyond uh, propositional, beyond Boolean. Um, and our analysis also focuses on the fundamental case of propositional systems. Um, uh, which applies also to infinite state systems to predicate abstraction. Uh, I think it's a very interesting question to see uh, how these ideas can be extended to richer logics and there are actually opportunities also in exact concept learning because it's, uh, there, are, it's, there are relatively few papers on uh, learning formulas in logics beyond propositional. Okay, uh, there is uh, uh, one more question on AirMeet from Amir Mohammed Nazari. So imagine in a step FI, you have a counter example in the set. How do you find a subset of the state of FI such that remove the counter examples? Also, it seems to me similar to the idea of IC3, how fast is your algorithm compared to other things? Uh, 
Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure I understand the question in its entirety. So if not, we can continue this offline. But uh, the idea of Lambda PDR is to, um, uh, in, a, in an eager fashion uh, and an exhaustive fashion, do exactly what IC3 and PDR are doing, uh, uh, generating clauses that exclude the counter examples and minimizing those clauses. The, the idea is, ju is just for the theoretical analysis to take all such possible clauses. Um, so uh, uh, that's not very easy to implement in a, in a practical sense, but I think it gives us insight into uh, the kind of things that uh, PDR is doing and all the approximation in PDR. We can continue this offline. Uh, the last question from AirMeet is from Thomas Reps. Can you say anything about the convergence rate properties of extensions of PDR to non-Boolean domains? Uh, I, I wish I could, but uh, not yet. Uh, very interesting topic. That's short and sweet. Uh, so thank you for the uh, talk. Now we thank move you. on to our uh, next speaker.